Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. My name is Chris Meyer. I'm going to be your host for the day. And today on the show, we have Dean Holman. He is the steel guitar player over at the Presley's Country Jubilee. First time he's been on the show. We're excited to have him here on the show today. And happy Christmas Eve for those of you that are watching the episode as it goes live. And um, what a special holiday season. What a special time celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And that is, besides his death, that is also one of the most important holidays there is. I do have a couple interesting Christmas facts. Um, the first Christmas postage stamp was in 1962. And did you know that the Christmas tree was believed to have started in Germany? And it was in 1610, I believe, to start then. Every year, Europeans decorate about 50 million live Christmas trees. In the United States, they say it's about 35 million. Um, and did you know it takes an average of six to eight years for a Christmas tree to be fully grown, but it can take as long as 15 years. I personally do not have live Christmas trees. I did that uh, probably the first year I got married and I said, I will never have a live Christmas tree again. I did not do a good job. I think I went and just like cut down a tree and it was not the right tree and it like shed all over. So now I have these really nice artificial trees. Um, <laughs> Folks, every once in a while, I will give you a tip on if you're thinking about coming to Branson or maybe you're here in Branson watching the show. Here's a book out called The Flavor of Branson. It's a uh, complete dining guide. It's been around 15 years um, and it lists every restaurant in Branson by category. And then in the back, it has about 30 coupons uh, so you can save on your next dining um, trip here in Branson. Lots of great uh uh, restaurants, there's over probably about 300 restaurants listed here in the book. So these are in racks around uh, town, probably at a, if you're staying in a hotel, probably at the hotel, they're free to pick up. I highly recommend you get this flavor of Branson. Um, we will be back in just a minute with Dean Holman. So hang tight. The Christmas season is a perfect time for family traditions. Branson's Lights of Joy, Branson's all-LED Christmas display drive through is a great way to create those lasting Christmas memories. Discover over 250 Christmas displays in an amazing drive through tunnel with state-of-the-art lighting. Branson's Lights of Joy is located just north of Sight & Sound Theater on Expressway Lane. Open nightly through January 2nd. Santa loves these lights and will be there on select nights. Visit lightsofjoydrivethrough.com for more info and to book online. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. And today for the first time, I have Dean Holman on the show. Dean, it's good to have you. Thank you, sir. So um, you are over at the Presley Theater, mm -hmm. uh, but you have done, you've done a lot of stuff in the entertainment industry. And so kind of kind of take people way back and tell them about yourself and how you got started. And Well, I'll go way back to, uh, I started out when I was nine years old and uh, my dad played and uh, I started on the banjo. And then uh, back when I was about 15, almost 16 years old, there was a, uh, a, a, a guy that owned a roofing business there in my hometown of West Plains, Missouri. Okay. And he built a music theater. In like West he, Plains? In West Plains, Missouri. He built a music theater. It was called 160 Mountain Music Jubilee. Huh. And uh, the guy that owned the theater was a relative of Mike Nichols and uh, from the uh, Ozark uh, Hoedown Show. And uh, Mike and he, his brother and a cousin, they came to West Plains and put together a show, and I was part of that show. Huh. And uh, that was back in 1986. And around that time, I was just playing banjo and some harmonica, but I always wanted to play uh, pedal steel guitar. And I don't remember, I don't remember how I found out about it, but there was a guy in Springfield, Missouri, back at that time, had a music store called Brentwood Music Store. I've heard of it, yeah. And uh, he carried uh, steel, he was a steel guitar player and, and, uh, and had a number of steel guitars in that store. And I bought my first steel guitar there. And uh, so I just kind of progressed. And then uh, when I graduated, uh, high school, 
uh, there were some shows in Lake of the Ozark. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, there was about seven shows wow. there at Lake of the Ozark. And uh, I had some friends that worked at a show over there. And I was actually going to come here when I graduated, but I ended up getting a job at the one of the shows there in uh, Lake of the Ozarks before I come here. And then uh, I worked at that show for three seasons, and then I came over here back in 92 when everything was booming big. Yeah, you came, you came when I came to Branson. And everything was booming big, and I couldn't buy a job in this town, believe it or not. Wow. And so I, uh, I did get to work with Barbara Fairchild back then. Uh, worked worked with her and worked some other places around town and uh, a group up in Springfield and all of that. But uh, back in '94, uh, I got to fulfill two dreams. Uh, I got to go out uh, with a group called the Desert Rose Band. And uh, if people don't know who they are, uh, Chris Hillman, Herb Peterson, John Jorgensen, uh, still my favorite group today. Hmm. And uh, I worked with them, and at the same time, I ended up going to work for Ricky Skaggs. Wow. So I moved to Nashville and went to work for Ricky uh, about three and a half years. and. Uh, and then after Ricky, I went to work for Tanya Tucker, and uh, that, was, that was a culture shock. <laughs> 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 but uh, but no, I actually loved working for Tanya. She was very very good to me. In fact, I'm still friends with her today. Yeah. And uh, so I did that, and then uh, you toured the country then. I I did I, a lot of touring back then, mm -hmm. and uh, so I back in. Uh, till about 99 and then I came back to Branson and went to work at several shows at that time for about eight years maybe and then I decided to uh, go back out on the road and my last uh, my last road tour was with Joe Nichols okay and when I started with Joe, we we were doing a, a huge tour, package tour with uh, Toby Keith. Oh wow! And uh, so I worked with Joe for about three and a half years or so, and then uh, I decided, all right, you know, I've had enough of the road. <laughs> the music has changed. Uh, a lot had changed in Nashville since even the days that I was with. Ricky and Tanya, and I'm like, you know, I don't need it anymore. I've got nothing to prove. Uh, I come back, and I had actually been talking to the Mabes uh, about three or four years prior to moving back to okay. Branson, and uh, so I got an opportunity that I, I had talked to them again. Uh, and they were interested in wanting to hire uh, hire me, so I came back to France and went to work for Ball Knobber Show for five seasons. Now, were you doing just the steel guitar then, or everything I've done is steel guitar, banjo, and dobro? Okay, because not every band has those instruments no, in them, right? No, they I mean don't. that makes it harder, even. Uh, it it does, but I think my experience with playing different kind of music and genres of music mm -hmm. uh, and how you approach it uh, has made it possible for me to to get work yeah. and uh, work at shows and, and, and what have you. But, uh, but anyhow, I, I worked with the Ball Novers for five seasons and then, uh, then I got a call that uh, Presley's, and I'm like, you know, I better check it out because I, I had actually gotten a call from the Presleys before I went to work for Ball Knobbers, and uh, I'm like, well, I'd already been talking to him and already kind of committed myself to it, and and I'm one of those guys that when you do that, that's 
mm-hmm. what what you do. Right. And so, but anyhow, it still worked out that I got to uh, go to work for the the Presleys. Yeah. And how long have you been there at the Presleys? Six seasons. Now. Six seasons. Yep. So you really, I mean, you performed for really two of the longest running shows in Branson. I'm probably other than Bob Leftridge, who, you know, he performed at the Presleys too. I'm the only musician uh, in town that moved across the street to play for with the Ball Knobbers and the Presleys. Okay, okay. Well, that's an interesting story. And so you, I mean, you've been playing, I mean, if you think about it, you've been playing the steel guitar for a almost, long time. Almost 35 years. Yeah. yeah. So folks, that's why he's so good on the steel <laughs> guitar, because he's been doing it a long time. Yeah. And we're going to stop right here. We'll be back in just a minute with more with Dean Holman. All new Presley's Country Jubilee on RFD TV. Saturday nights are packed full with your favorite country hits, side splitting comedy, and gospel that will touch your heart. Presley's Country Jubilee. New episodes this Saturday on RFD TV. Hey folks, welcome back to the show. We're here today with Dean Holman and he is the steel guitar player over at the Presleys. And Mm -hmm. you got actually a very early start on the stage at the Presleys in kind of a unique event. Why don't you tell us about that? Yes, uh, mom and dad, my mom and dad, uh, since I was three years old, maybe earlier than that, uh, we'd come to Branson and uh, this particular year, uh, Presley's was doing, uh, this was back when they were doing talent shows. And so uh, I had been playing banjo for about a year, I think. And actually, I was actually playing banjo, you know, pretty decent for, for nine, ten years old. And so uh, we came to the show one uh, summer and uh, they had like applications or something that you could fill out and I filled out an applica- uh whatever application yeah, or whatever yeah. it was and uh, sent it in and, and uh, I got a spot on the talent show and I was the very first performer to, to uh, play. Well, that's cool. On the talent show back in 19, it was their last one. Wow. It was their last I was going to say, they haven't done a talent show in a long yeah. time. Yeah, it's been since 80. Yeah. Who would have ever thought when you were doing that, that years later you'd actually be part of that show? I mean, that's pretty, good. That's pretty interesting. Well, I'll tell you what, honestly, because uh, it's always been in my blood, uh, and all the years that I've been in Branson, I've always kind of had it in the back of my head that there was a good possibility that I could do it. Yeah. And uh, and so I was just, I was able to. Mm-hmm. Now were you self-taught on all these instruments? Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, now my dad played some and he showed me, you know, kind of the basics on, on, mm-hmm. on some things, but, uh, but no, I pretty much sat at home listen to anything and everything I could get a hold of and wow. self-taught. Wow. Um, so tell people a little bit, if they haven't seen the Presley show, like what can they expect and then kind of what you do in the show as well? Well, I'll tell you, uh, the show, if you come to the show, uh, it, everything is just so well put together and flows and there's there's a reason for everything that we do. Mm. And uh, now I, on the other hand, uh, if you come see the show, uh, you're not gonna see a knot on a log. I'm up there cutting up, me and Zach Presley, 
Scott's son, he stands next to me. And we're all the time cutting up, all because the, uh, if the comedians say something or somebody does something or plays something or says something, then we're always like, did you hear that? You mm -hmm. see? Or always making, we like we like to sit there and make sport of stuff. And, yeah. And uh, I'm I'm pretty animated on the show, so when I sit up there and and they're saying something funny or doing something like that, I'm I'm going along with it all the time. And uh, so it's just a lot of fun. It's just so much fun, and uh, everybody is so wonderful, and we all get along great. Uh, I, it's it's just honestly, it's just almost not like a job. That's good though. Uh, it it really is. Yeah. It really is. And uh and it was the same way with the ball knobbers too. Of course yeah. of course I you know, uh it, it's easy for me to say that because honestly, really I I I'm easy to get along with and I get along <laughs> with everybody because I'm so laid back and I yeah. just don't I don't let a lot of things bother me. Yeah. And uh so if somebody if somebody wanted to learn how to play the steel guitar today, like what what would advice would you give them? I mean, what would they do? Well, I'm going to tell you uh, because steel guitar has always been re regarded as such a, a country music instrument. Uh, I'm here to tell you it's not. You can do anything on a steel guitar. Uh, any play any genre of music. Uh, Paul Franklin proved that when he went out on tour with Dire Strait back in the early 90s. Uh, you've got guys like Robert Randolph, if you've ever heard of Robert Randolph. Uh, the, you can play rock and roll on it, uh, which I've done. I've played rock and roll, jazz, any kind yeah, of genre. I think genre. I saw a video of you playing jazz the, on, I don't know, YouTube or your Facebook or something like that. Oh, probably on the show. On the on our TV show, I, I did a, a song called SS Cool, yeah, which is jazz yeah. song, and uh, so you can play anything on a steel guitar. And unlike when I started out, there's ton, like with any instrument really, there's tons of stuff on YouTube. Okay, tons of teachers that teach, and way more stuff than I had when I yeah. started out. So I, I want to shift gears here for just a second because this has been a really big year for you in 2020. Yeah. Yes, and, it sure has. Um, you yes, sir. were on, I think, the kidney transplant list for three and a half years. That's right. And you got a new kidney this year. I got a new kidney. So yep. back in May. Back in May. Yes, sir. And so I know that was had to be an exciting time for you. Uh, you know what? It was, it was, it was exciting. Uh, at the same time, it was kind of sad because, uh, I, I, you know, my wife or, or I, I couldn't have any visitors in the mm, hospital. Yeah. So I was just by myself. But where I was at, I got such great care there at KU yeah. in, in Kansas. Yeah. Such a great, great organization over there. And and ever since they, I got the new kidney, uh, r just right off the bat, I never had to do any more dialysis wow and my kidney was has just worked great ever yeah. since they dropped it in there and then i noticed you got covid yeah and so did that did that like was that concerning because of the kidney or did you i mean obviously uh, you're here and you've made it through and well i i was sick for about a week and a half and then uh I had called them at KU because any now with the new kidney, anything I do, I go through them. Right. And they t and I was starting to have a little bit of trouble breathing, and I felt like I was starting to get some pneumonia. Yeah. And they said so. They told me to go to the emergency room here, and I told them you need to talk to KU. They talked to KU, and KU said, "Ship." Go Trans on up to transfer KU. Transfer me to KU yeah, yeah. so they can take care of my medical needs yeah. from that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I, I, I'm just, number one, I'm just glad you're, you got the kidney because I know that was a big prayer request and uh, yes, you spent a lot of time waiting. And, and yes. so 
Uh, even though yeah. this year's been a tough year, I, I'd say it's, in some respects, it's been a good year. It as has well. been a very good year. You know? It has. So, yes, uh, God is good and God is faithful. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we, you know, and that's the thing, when this episode airs, it's December 24th, it's Christmas Eve, um, you know, and God is good at the end of the day. So, absolutely. Yeah. Dean, it's been good having you on the show. Yes, sir. Uh, folks, go to the press release. See what this guy can do. He is an amazing steel guitar player. He also does banjo. He does dobro, but mm -hmm. he uh, he. And you can go see the YouTube videos of him playing the steel guitar. He does an amazing job. It's great having you in the community, Dean. So I appreciate that. We'll be back. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment with more. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. We are wrapping the show up today. Dean Holman was amazing. And I the history of our musicians, you know, and sometimes they go on the road, you know, where he was playing with Ricky Skaggs, Tanya Tucker. Uh, you're not going to hear about that necessarily in the show. And so that's one of the reasons we like to try and do this show is so you have more information about our Branson musicians. And really, they are masters at their craft. And folks, this is why you know, live entertainment is so important and it's so important right now, especially that you support live entertainment, especially with COVID. Uh, the theater industry has been hit extremely hard. The whole tourism industry has been, ex been hit extremely hard. And Branson has been one of the few places that you can see live entertainment. So if you're out there and you're like, hey, what should we do after Christmas? Guess what? Branson is open after Christmas. There's still lots to do here right after Christmas time. So Come check it out. Call the folks at ibranson.com or go online to ibranson.com and you can book it there. You can call them at 877-ENTERTAIN. They can help plan your entire Branson vacation. There's still shows, attractions, lights, everything going on through the end of the year. Now, another big thing that happens in Branson is New Year's Eve. So a lot of times there's a lot of shows that are going on and they're doing special deals. So we have things going on at the Americana Theater at the we have at the clay cooper theater you get the hay goods and clay cooper combined in a big show over things over at grand country the hamners legends in concert there's a whole bunch of things happening and those shows can sell out so i recommend highly that you book them quickly um, our next episode we have a new person never have interviewed adriana fine from the god and country theater and so i'm looking forward to interviewing her and then next week that will be our last show of the year we'll wrap up 2020 with our last show of the year. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll be back next week.